Right, well, good morning, everybody. All those who are here in front of me, and it is rather all those today, and it is lovely, lovely to see you. And all those who are at home, including a number of new people who have got in contact with us recently. A lady from Germany wrote to us um, saying about our services. And you are all, wherever you are, Devon, Cornwall, the other side of the world, you are all very, very welcome. In case you don't know, I'm Helen, I'm the church warden. Those of you who have heard this often before will be a bit fed up with this. The other church warden, David, is behind the camera and he's getting on with it, filming for us, so that this will go out a bit later. I have to tell you, it is pretty cold here at Brentor, pretty windy, but the daffodils are out blowing in the wind and it is a lovely day. Now, a couple of notices. Um, obviously, next week we have our Holy Communion service, which we're looking forward to, here, 9.45. On the 23rd of March, it is um, a national day of remembrance when we're thinking about all the people whom we've lost, who've suffered in this last year. It's the anniversary of the first national lockdown. And in this church, what we are doing is we're putting vases out on the table at the back. And if you would like to bring a flower and put it in the church, in the vase, to remember somebody who has passed away, perhaps not with COVID, but perhaps under these really difficult circumstances that we've all been through, with people in hospital, people in care homes, people you can't go and see, the funerals, which have been really difficult for so many people. So if you'd like to bring a flower in memory of anyone, then please do feel free to put it in the church. And if you can't get to the church because you're at home, it's too far, but you would like a flower put anyway for somebody. If you could email me or David, you'll find the um, email address on the website, then we will find a flower. I've got lots of daffodils at home and I would be very, very happy to put a daffodil in for anyone that you would like to have a flower put for. And we'll put pictures up at the end afterwards. Also, outside the church, there is a large um, box with a slot in the top and if you would like any names particularly to be remembered you could just put those names on a piece of card or a piece of paper post them in this it's like a big post box put it in the top and we will make sure that those names are recorded because we have a special book a memorial book from Brentor which Sam has been doing some lovely work with and what we're hoping to do is have a page for all those people who we remember particularly, not necessarily from this parish, whoever they may be, for this year, this pandemic year. So there will be a page that will go in our memorial book for those people who you would like to have named. Now it's lovely and quiet right now because the children aren't here, but I would like to say, have a lovely day everybody. Thank you. Oh, and here's Wendy by the way, rather more important, sorry. Thank you, Helen. And welcome everybody to our Mothering Sunday service today. And to begin with, we're going to light a candle today and we're going to say a little prayer together. We light this candle to remind us that the love of God is like a light in our darkness. Blessed be God, God forever. We praise you, our God, for all who have mothered and have loved and laughed and laboured as they cared for children. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. We praise you, O oh God, for all who have mothered who have wept in sorrow and joy for their children. Blessed be God forever. We praise you, our God, for Jesus, born of a woman and nurtured in her love, and for Mary, 
a reminder of your patient waiting love. Blessed be God forever. We come together today to hear about God and God's people, to pray together, to enjoy each other's company, albeit at a distance or virtually. And we also take time to thank God for the fact that we are able to meet here today without fear and also for all that we have been given. We thank God for one another and for all we have been given. We indeed thank God for this life and for the life to come. And we continue our worship this morning by saying some verses from Psalm 134 together. Let, Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have, I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I entrust my life. And it's a beautiful thought on Mothering Sunday that God cares for us. And I love this particular verse from Psalm 91. God will shelter you with his wings. You will find safety under his wings. His faithfulness is like a shield or a protective wall. So we listen to our first song of praise. Come, now is the time to worship. time to worship Come Now is the time to give your heart Come Just as you are to worship Come Just as you are before
continue to praise God with our second song this morning, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. I think it's beautiful. Jesus, like a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Despair turns to hope through your sweet goodness. Through your gentleness, we find comfort in fear. Your warmth gives life to the dead. Your touch makes sinners righteous. Lord Jesus, in your mercy, heal us. In your love and tenderness, remake us. In your compassion, bring grace and forgiveness. For the beauty of heaven, may your love prepare us. Amen. Now, I wonder if you knew and we welcome the children in at this point, especially. <laughs> I wonder if you knew that Sunday is the fourth Sunday of Lent. And traditionally, it was a day when children, mainly daughters, but sons too, who had gone to work as domestic servants far away, they were given a day off to visit their mother and family. And the return to the mother church became an occasion for family reunions when children who were working away from home returned. And I wonder if you knew that as they walked along country lanes, they would pick wild flowers or violets to take to church or to give their mother as a small gift. And we have in front of us today here a signal cake baked by Sally. I don't know if you can see it. 
It's a beautiful Simno cake. And I know that in the back, we've got pieces already cut from a separate Simno cake to hand out to various members of our church family later today. And I gather, Sally, this will also be shared at some point. Thank you for baking it. So Mothering Sunday was also known as Refreshment Sunday because, of course, the feasting rules for Lent were relaxed on that day. Good job, I say. And the food item especially associated with Mothering Sunday is the Simnel cake, one of which we have here. I feel like a Blue Peter presenter, you know, I have one ready made. Um, a Simnel cake, of course, is a fruit cake with two layers of almond paste. I've never made one. Has anybody here made one? No, there you go. Well done, Sally, okay? Um, so two layers of almond paste on the top and one in the middle. And the cake is made with 11 balls here of marzipan icing on the top, representing the 11 disciples, not including Judas, of course. And traditionally, sugared violets would have been added to. There you go, sugared violets. And as truly as God is our Father, we are reminded today that God is our mother too. So let's turn and say sorry to God for the ways in which we have fallen short. How often have I longed to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord. But you would not come to me. Let us as wayward children return to God and confess our sins. We say together, you, you called on human beings to, to care, care for your gift of creation, to, to care, care for one another as you care for us. We don't, we don't always do it well. Lord. We are sorry. We are, we are sorry that we don't always appreciate the world around us and those closest to us as we should. should. Christ, Christ, we are, are sorry. Lord God of all, help, help us to do better, to be your hand in this world and to shine as a light in the world to the glory of your name. Lord, we are sorry. Lord, we are indeed sorry when we don't always behave as we should. Thank you for the blessings that we receive. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The prayer for today. We thank you, Lord God, for this church community and for church communities around the world that we may call home. We thank you for those who have loved us as we are and have helped bring us closer to you. We thank, we thank you, you, Lord. Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the fact that we have food to eat and water to drink. We thank you for those people, for the food to prepare the food for us and make sure that we are looked after and that we have clean water so readily at our disposal. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for loving us and for the fact that we can call upon your name when we are in need, knowing that you will hear us. Strengthen us, Lord, in these challenging of times and help us bring comfort to others. We thank, we thank you, Lord. Lord. May the peace of Christ be with you. And, and also Lord. with you. And we reflect on the peace of Christ as we listen to our next song. of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more 
for heaven now to give He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom My steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus For my life is wholly bound to His Oh, how strange and divine I can sing all is mine Yet not I, but through Christ in me Savior, He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold, my Shepherd will be. But what lovely um, words in, in that song. So we come to our first reading this morning, and I think David is going to read this passage for us. Psalm 
Now, Mothering Day service last year was our first sort of virtual and recorded service. And it's been a very, very strange year. Um, it's felt sometimes like the rhythms of our, our normal lives have been just completely put on hold, even though we've tried to keep services going throughout. But I think these verses from two, uh, second letter to the Corinthians really speak to us all in this year of all years. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Thank you, David. And we recall the love of Mary in the next song that we listen to, for Mary, Mother of our Lord. Those words reminding us that the business of mothering, the service of mothering, is often bittersweet. Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke. So we come to our Gospel reading. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. 
So this is a very short reading, and uh, just to explain the context, um, it occurs at a time when it, uh, Jesus' parents had taken, taken the baby to the uh, temple. <clears throat> so Luke uh, chapter 2, verses 33 to 35. The child Jesus' father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nick. May I be helped to speak in the name of the living God. Amen. Well, today on Mothering Sunday, we remind ourselves that this church festival is actually about the Mother Church and how we, as part of our church family, are encouraged to grow together in God's love. And I think I've mentioned already that traditionally, on this day, servants used to return to their Mother Church, meaning either the place they were baptised or to the mother church of the diocese, often the cathedral. Over time, however, the focus of Mothering Sunday has moved away from the church to human mothers. And the practice of giving flowers to mothers on this day, as we know, came from those domestic staff from large estates, visiting mothers on their time off after church and picking flowers from the hedgerows on the way to give to their mothers. It's a long way from what Mothering Sunday has become. And while I genuinely love receiving a card or flowers from my children on this day, I appreciate that for many this day is a particularly challenging one. So I want to acknowledge today on Mothering Sunday, all those who have mothered us in families across the land. Grandparents, aunties, uncles, fathers, godparents, foster parents and carers. And those who mother us in our communities too. Teachers, Nurses, doctors, providing motherly love and care to so many children and adults. And I want to recognise their service and give thanks today for all those and in years gone by, all of those who have given themselves to and for us. This is a day when we celebrate motherly care those individuals who have made sacrifices so that we might enjoy life that little bit better. And it's also a day for celebrating our church family too, who make us welcome. Our gospel reminds us that loving and caring in this way is a sacrifice of self-giving. It's a vocation to which many of us are called. It's a vocation that brings with it a huge sense of joy, but can also involve a great deal of tiredness and worry, even deep pain at times, especially when the care we provide may be rejected by those whom we love, or perhaps when we see those whom we love hurting. Our gospel acknowledges this. 
We read of Simeon's prophecy to Mary. We read that Mary and Joseph marvelled at what was said about Jesus. You can almost feel their pride, surprise and delight at such an extraordinary prophecy. Their son would be the saviour of the world, the light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of the people Israel. But then Simeon says to Mary, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. And this changes things. Later in the chapter, we hear that Mary treasured or another translation says she pondered all these things in her heart. I think had I been Mary, Simeon's message would have been bittersweet. It would have left me somewhat uneasy for the path that lay ahead. We now know, of course, that Simeon's message was spot on, as they say. And I wonder if, when Mary stood beside her dying son on the cross, she recalled Simeon's words that a sword would pierce her soul. There is a fierce love, isn't there, created between those who love and care for a child and the child itself. I would rather have something terrible happen to me than it happen to one of my children. And while I am, in general, quite a calm little person, aren't I, David? Yes, yes, very, yes, of yes, very yes. calm little person. Um, should there be a hint of any harm towards my children, I think it's fair to say that I turn into a roaring tigress. It's a primal instinct and a visceral experience. And one perhaps that many of us can relate to. And I can see uh, lots nodding their heads uh, at that comment. But before we become utterly despondent and gloomy, let's remind ourselves that Mothering Sunday is not just about the Mothering Church, but it's also about how God is Father and Mother to us. And although we say together, our Father, we tend to use the pronoun he, there are a number of feminine images of God that speak of God's tenderness and commitment to God's people. In Isaiah, God speaks to Israel saying, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Such is God's love for us. For you and for me. And it's vital that we remember this, especially in what has been and continues to be an unprecedented time in our lives. The world seems to have shrunk this past year, don't you think? Our lives have become so very small and even those who care for us may not be able to fully understand us or help us in the ways in which we would like them to or need them to. And some of us may feel alone, forgotten almost. In such times, it's even more important than ever to remember that we are all God's children. God is with us and we can bring to God those worries that we may have in the sure knowledge that God will help us hold them. So whether today is a time of rejoicing, ambivalence 
or one of poignancy, please hold on to the fact that you are God's child. God is both mother and father to you in a way that can bring healness, healing and fullness of life. And I love these words from Psalm 139. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Amen. So let's rededicate ourselves to God who mothers and fathers us. We say together, Christ, Christ died, died for our sins, sins in, in accordance, accordance with, with the scriptures. He was buried, he was, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. And this, this we have received, and this we believe. Amen. And of course, we could not let Mothering Sunday go by without a gift for everybody. So, Sally has been busy preparing, as have others, a plant for our church family members. I believe they're miniature tulips, Sally. Miniature tulips, which we will be delivering at some point in the next few days. And for everybody here today, and for some at home, we will be delivering a hug in a mug. Now, do we know what a hug in a mug is? Here we go. It's a little parcel, and inside these parcels you will find a sachet of cappuccino, we all love a coffee, don't we? A sachet of hot chocolate. And there's a biscuit or a chocolate. What could be a, be what could be a better reminder than God's love for us than a ham in a mug? So as we hand out some of the gifts, socially distanced of course, we're going to listen to the next hymn which celebrates really all that we have been given. Spring is upon us, making that world feel just a little bit more special. So let's enjoy for the beauty of the earth.
The response to God is love is hear our prayer. God of love, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. As children of a loving God who always listens to our cries, let us pray to our Father in heaven. Loving God, you have given us the right to be called children of God. Help us to show your love in our homes, that they may be places of love, security and truth. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, Jesus your Son was born into the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless all parents and all who care for children. Strengthen those families living under stress and may your love be known where no human love is found. God of love, hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the family of the church. We pray that all may find in her their true home, that the lonely, the marginalised, the rejected, that all of us may be welcomed and loved in the name of Jesus. God of love, hear our Loving God, as we see the brokenness of our world, we pray for healing among the nations, for food where there is hunger, for freedom where there is oppression, for joy where there is pain, that your love may bring peace to all your children. God of love, hear our prayer. And we pray for those who have asked for our prayers, those who are ill or anxious, at home or in hospital. Chris Vigars, Nick and Julie, Dave and Wendy, Edward Walter, Lydia, Margaret, Lynn Bristow, Tom, and Jo, who is having her baby today. And we pray too for the souls of the recently departed, especially their family and friends, and for those whose funerals are this week. God of love, hear our prayer. And we finish with the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, Helen. Spring is upon us and all that new life is there for us to see. So let's rejoice as we leave here today. Let's rejoice in all that we have been given and let's stay together as a church family. We listen to our final hymn this morning, Tell Out My Soul.
us go out as the people of God. God has given us the citizenship of heaven with his blessed and beloved and the whole company of the redeemed. Amen. Amen. God gives the will to live each day in life eternal and the grace to go forth and bear fruit in the world. Amen. Amen. God bring us eventually to the home that Christ prepares for all who love him. Amen. Amen. So let's go from here today in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Happy Mothering Sunday all. Great to see you.